Okay, so we went over those crystallographic directions, but now let's talk about some common crystallographic directions. Uh, as a note, you look here and you see that, oh, well, this is not um, a perfect cube, is it? No, not only are the three sides possibly different, though that's not 100% sure, and these three angles are definitely not all right angles. Um, so this angle is not a right angle, and this angle is not a right angle, and this angle is not a right angle. Um, and here's the great thing. Crystallographic directions don't care. They don't care if the sides are a different length. They don't care if they're a different angle. All they care about is how many fractions of a side did you move in any particular direction. Okay? That makes things a lot easier on us when we're trying to talk about things. So we can talk about different atoms and different crystals and different uh, materials that all have different configurations in a consistent way. So here are three directions that are really good, the green, the blue, and the red. Um, now, I'm wondering if you can guess why those are some common crystallographic directions. Yeah. Why is this one not a common crystal one? Why is that one not a common crystal one? Why not? Well, the reason that these are so important is for the following reason. The close packed direction, CPD, close packed direction is very important. That is the point along which most materials are stiffest. They want to do the least amount of stretching. And so for a face-centered cubic, well, atoms touch along a face. That's the close packed direction. For a body-centered cubic, atoms touch um, through the center of the body, which would be that direction. And then for a simple cubic, atoms touch along the edges, which would be that direction. So these are important for the face-centered cubic, body-centered cubic, and simple cubic, respectively. And these are the closest packed direction. It's the direction where I'm going to hit an atom most quickly if I travel in that direction. It's also the direction that has the highest linear density of atoms. So linear density is simply the number of atoms centered on a direction vector. Because, you know, technically, if I like, pass through the atom right here, I've kind of like clipped it. We're only saying I went through the center, the exact center of these theoretically perfectly spherical atoms. Then finally, the, the length of that direction vector. Okay, so let's try this out. So this is aluminum, and you know, aluminum is face-centered cubic, so it touches along this particular direction. Now, what is the length of that direction? Okay, well, that is square root of 2a. And we know what a is. We can look that up if we want to from some, some tables. Now, there are two half atoms and one full atom in this direction. And you're like, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 that's not. There's, there's one half atom and there's two eighth atoms. You are completely correct. However, and this is where things get weird, when it's linear density, we consider we're only looking at it along a line. So if I'm looking at it from the top, okay, this is me looking at it from the top. Do my best here. There we go. Okay. This looks like a whole atom, doesn't it? And these two, you will say, like, well, that still looks kind of like a quarter. You're right. But more or less, think about it this way. I, how many radiuses or how many diameters did I go through? Well, I went through 4R, which is equal to two diameters. And so therefore, two atoms were centered on this vector, okay? Two atoms were centered on this direction. So it comes to linear density. Think how many diameters did I cut through, directly through. And that will help you when you're trying to figure out the number of atoms you're going into. Number of diameters. Okay, so the number of atoms, cool, two, over the length, which is square root of two over 0 0.405, which will be 3.5 nanometers to the negative first. 3.5 nanometers to the negative first. Um, and let's see, yeah, that's all it is for here. I also want to show you another little trick here. For any given direction, if you want to figure this out, um, you can also find the linear density by finding the distance between two atoms on that direction, the closest two atoms, and then taking the inverse. 
So, you know, how we did it this last time was we said, okay, well, you know, this right here, this line that's going from one, but I hit an atom earlier than this. I hit another center of atom halfway along that line. Okay, so let's try this. I'm just gonna do the inverse distance between the closest two atoms. So if square root of two a is this distance, then half of that is simply square root of two over two, um, you know, a, okay. I have a plug in 0 0.405 there, so let's do that. 0 0.405, phantasmagorical. And then it's gonna take the inverse of this. So one divided by this. And surprisingly enough, that will come out to be exactly the same. If you're wondering, well, how does it come out to be exactly the same? Square root of two over two is right there. It has exact same form. So this is oftentimes a lot easier way of going about this. A lot easier way of going about this. So I, I really hope this helps you. And um, I look forward to seeing you all next time. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye-bye.